At this time, I'll take the opportunity to explain a little bit about the development of samadhi in the initial stages of the practice of meditation. In the practice of meditation, our aim is to make our own heart and mind, the jitta, peaceful. We begin by establishing the correct posture. Put our right foot and right leg on the left foot, left leg. Our right hand, we rest on our left hand in our lap. We make this body straight and erect. And we close the eyes and make a determination not to change our posture, move around during the meditation. The next step is to recollect the virtues and qualities of the Lord Buddha. We recollect his great compassion, his Maha Karuna, in that he went through so much, uh, renounced so much and went through so much for the benefit of all beings. He reached enlightenment and was able to bring the Dhamma and the explain the path to enlightenment to others. We recollect his great purity, his parisuti, his great wisdom, panya. These qualities come through that effort that led to him overcoming uh, and abandoning the kilesa, the mental defilements, successfully. Having recollected the virtues of the Lord Buddha, we develop the thought of metta, loving kindness to all beings, wishing that all beings be without suffering, without hostility, and free from thoughts of harming each other. Having done this, we then bring our sati, our mindfulness, to focus on the feeling of the in and out breath. Our aim here is just to know each breath as it enters and leaves the body, to recollect the breath. One can use the mantra, the barikama, the preparatory meditation word, butho, in conjunction with the breathing, Breathe in, recite silently in your mind, Bud. As you breathe out, recite Do. Or if you don't wish to use this parikama, this mantra, that's okay. In the beginning of this meditation on the breath, we pick three points to focus on. The first point is at the tip of the nose, at the nostrils. The second point is at our chest, the center of our chest. The third point is at the abdomen. We follow the breath in, noting it at these three points, and then follow the breath out, again noting these three points. Having established awareness on the feeling of the breath going in and out in this way, we then gather our awareness at just one point at the nostrils, the tip of the nose, and fix our awareness there on the in and out breath at that one point. As we do this, if there's some agitation, mental proliferation, agitated thinking, and our mindfulness is unable to stick with the breath, then we can turn to contemplate this body, to contemplate the four elements that make up this body, earth, air, fire, and water. We can begin this by running through, in our mind, the 32 parts of the body, 
So when we're contemplating the earth element, we contemplate those parts of the body that have solidity or hardness as their most prominent feature. So hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, bones and so on. We contemplate to see that these different parts of the body come from the earth. They're made up of earth and eventually they go back to the earth. They are the earth element or represent the earth element. We recollect and contemplate this over and over again going back and forth through the different parts of the body and contemplating to see how they have arisen, come from the earth and go back to the earth. Doing this, if the mind settles down and becomes peaceful, then we may return to the breathing meditation. If we do this, this is an example of what we call using insight or wisdom to develop samadhi. This is using our own wisdom and our ability to contemplate to help develop mindfulness when it, we're finding it difficult to stay with the breath we contemplate in this way we contemplate keeping our awareness in the body and focused on the body in the beginning of my own practice I often did this at times when the mind was not peaceful and would not stay with the breath I would take the time to contemplate the body as the four elements or to develop the asupabhavana, seeing the unattractiveness or loath loathsomeness of the body. Maybe do this for half an hour in order to settle the mind and bring it to a state of calm. When doing this we have to depend on our own sanya, our memories, what we've learnt, and can remember and can visualize about this body uh, in order to develop this kind of uh, technique for calming the mind. This is something Lumpur Cha recommended. He said this is a way we can use wisdom to develop samadhi. At other times when the mind is more settled, there's no agitation or mental proliferation, then we can go straight to the breath. When we do this, we're just learning to cut off the thoughts about the past and the future, keep the mind fixed on the present moment with the feeling of the in and out breath. If we practice like this on a daily basis, then we'll learn how to do, develop mindfulness and use that mindfulness to abandon the agitation and mental proliferation we can also use mindfulness to recollect the theme of death uh, as another way to keep the mind in the present moment. We are learning to keep our mind in the present moment by using the breath as an object for our mindfulness or else using wisdom to contemplate the body and to help us abandon the tendency towards mental proliferation. For most of us, that tendency towards mental agitation, proliferation, thinking a lot, is very strong. And so this technique of using wisdom to contemplate the body is a very suitable way for developing samadhi. We contemplate to see the body as the four elements or as a supa to see it as subject to death and impermanence we can do this in each posture in each activity through our day not just when sitting when we're walking meditation moving around doing different activities we can still contemplate in this way and if we learn to do this in different postures through our day, when we do come to sit meditation in a formal way, it will help the mind to settle down quicker and to go in deeper 
and experience deeper states of samadhi. When we experience this, we'll experience the different factors of samadhi arising. The quality of vitaka, where we are lifting the mind to the object, the breath for instance. Vichara, where we sustain our attention on the breath. As we do this, the mind will settle down and experience more of a sense of peace and ease. And with this, pity will arise. Pity means the fullness of mind, filling with rapture and the sense of fullness. Sukha will arise, the sense of peace or calm. As we experience these different factors of samadhi arising, we might experience parts of our body seeming to disappear from our awareness. So the hands might seem to disappear, or the feet or the legs appear, seem to disappear. Gradually our whole body might seem to just disappear from our awareness. All that's left is the peaceful mind, free from the med- mental confusion and agitation. When we experience these factors and this, this kind of thing, then we will understand more clearly the internal happiness that arises from the practice of meditation. And this will help to boost our faith in the teachings of the Lord Buddha and give us energy to continue training. For a practitioner or a a bhikkhu who has the faith to come into the monastery and set aside their worldly concerns, um, they tend to be ready to be to face with the difficulties of training in meditation in this way. They're willing to put up with a little bit of hardship and difficulty because they have given up um, the pursuit of the more superficial or material happiness of the world, those external pursuits we are normally involved with. They must have been able to see at least on some level the impermanence or the temporary nature of worldly happiness and have some awareness of the danger of attaching to it and the, the danger of attaching to samsara and being stuck into the endless round of birth and death. This is similar to the Lord Buddha himself who left the palace because he saw the danger and harm of worldly attachment and he wanted to find an end of suffer- to suffering. So we're practicing to abandon the confusion of an untrained mind that is caught into its worldly moods and desires. And we do this by developing mindfulness in the body, in all postures, and by contemplating the mind and the body to help settle it down. And through this we're developing a clear seeing of all the different objects that come to the mind, all that the mind can know. If we develop this practice well, then we might experience upajara samadhi. Maybe we can learn to keep the mind at a level of upajara samadhi all day even if we take a rest when the mind when we wake up the mind is still uh, maintaining that level of samadhi it doesn't just fade away if we could do that achieve that that would be be something very great that would be the result of of a lot of hard work in the practice in the beginning, though, it's, it tends to be just occasional. Maybe once every seven days, the mind becomes peaceful, and then that state fades away. But as we develop experience in the practice, we learn how to maintain mindfulness and protect our minds. Then we can experience this kind of peace more often. We can see how or catch the mind when when the mental proliferation and agitation begins 
and quickly bring it back to the body or to the breath. One further point about training the mind is that when we practice meditation we have to support this practice by developing the ability to go against our likes and dislikes. What we say in Thai is that Toroman is learning to train ourselves to go against our habits and tendencies. This Lumpo Cha said this is the way to gain quick results in the practice quick success by learning to develop an equanimity and a coolness towards all the different conditions of mind and different experiences we have. This is both the practice of samatha and vipassana rolled into one. Samatha is learning to focus the mind on an object to develop one-pointedness. Vipassana is developing this clear seeing of the three characteristics of anicca, dukkha, anatta. When we practice to develop insight, this clarity, we have to keep focusing our mindfulness on the qualities of anicca, dukkha, anatta until they become clearer and clearer in our experience. For myself, I can remember one time when I was a young monk, I was staying in the charnel ground and I had extreme fear. The fear was so strong it was almost unbearable. But I was determined to continue practicing to overcome it. So I kept re-establishing my mindfulness until I could enter samadhi and make the mind peaceful. Entering samadhi means making the body and the mind feel very light and relaxed and letting go of all the attachments at that time. When I did this, then I got up and I went over and I contemplated the bones of the dead people left in that charnel ground. I contemplated them to see them as four, just the four elements, earth, air, fire and water. And doing this increased the level of pity and sukha and peace of mind. And it allowed me enough clarity to see that fear just arises out of ignorance. And as you replace the fear with wisdom and understanding, the mind becomes very peaceful and spacious. And you can see that attachment just is a cause of suffering and harm. You can see that very clearly. When the mind is peaceful, this allows us to see the harm of attachment attachment to the world and the worldly desires. As we keep contemplating, we can see attachment and desire, how it arises through our six senses. We can see the harm of attachment. We can see how the attachment to the objects of the six senses feed the five hindrances and how that is suffering. We can see how sensual desire, anger, dullness and sleepiness, mental agitation, doubt are all different forms of suffering that should be abandoned and overcome. We can see more clearly the value of training in mindfulness, the training in samatha and vipassana, we can see the value of developing this clarity of insight where we, where we know quite clearly that, that all things are subject to the three universal characteristics of anicca, dukkha, anatta. At first this kind of insight comes from sanya, from, just from our memory and our intellect. But later it develops into pavana, maya, panya, a deep insight coming from a peaceful mind. When the mind is still and peaceful, it can help us to see through the conventional reality which normal, normally deludes us. And instead of just believing in, in the conventional reality, the labeling of people and places and different experiences, we see through to the, penetrate through to the three characteristics and the four elements. And we don't believe our usual thought, thoughts and views on things. 
Seeing in this way is what we call vipassana yana, true insight, or pawana maya panya, true wisdom. And if we understand the way to practice to develop this, this is what we call majjhima patipata. It's following in the way of the Buddha and Lumpo Cha. If we practice in this way, we can experience a state where our mindfulness is right there. It's with the eyes as they see forms, with the ears as they hear sounds and so on. And the presence of mindfulness prevents the mind dropping into liking and disliking, keeps the mind in the middle with equanimity and detachment. So please practice to develop this. Please put effort into your practice. Continue with it. So here I've been talking about the practice of meditation and some of the very special and important results that arise from it. We have to understand that if our samadhi is not yet firm, then it's difficult for wisdom to be clear and it's difficult to overcome doubts about the truth and about the world. We have to practice to see that all conditioned things are anicca, impermanent, transient. Having arisen, they pass away. But if the mind is not yet firm and wisdom not yet clear, the mind won't fully accept this truth. You won't see it clearly at all times in all things. So we have to continue with the practice, deepening our wisdom and an investigation of this truth. And as it does deepen, this will help us to see through the samuti satya, the conventional appearance of things, to the deeper truth uh, that all things are subject to anicca, dukkha, anatta. Whatever physical or material thing you contemplate, whether it's something of the world or this body, you'll come to see that it's anicca, dukkha, anatta. And similarly, the other aspects of our human being, the mental side, the feeling, the memories, the thoughts, the sense consciousness, a subject to anicca, dukkha, anatta. When the mind is peaceful, it can know and see these truths. And this is what allows it to let go of delusions, the kind of delusions that manifest as sakaya ditti, or self-view, uh, kicha doubt about the practice, sila bhatta baramasa, deluded attachment to rituals and external practices. It's the peaceful mind clearly understanding and penetrating through to the three characteristics that allows us to drop, abandon these three fetters. We can do this through the development of samadhi, uh, using it as a foundation for contemplation and investigation. The Buddha always said that the practice of samadhi that is developed well it bears great fruit because it supports the arising of wisdom and wisdom that is trained well a mind that is trained in wisdom bears great fruit Fruit and that is, it liberates the mind from the kilesas and attachment so we have to be willing to train to work with our minds and to go against the five hindrances we have to be willing to keep practicing letting go learning to practice continuously whether the mind is peaceful or not we just keep practicing if we don't give up then sooner or later we must see the truth in my own practice it was like this in the beginning sometimes not peaceful sometimes peaceful when the mind was peaceful it became very cool the mind gathered together and unified as I kept practicing, then that sense of coolness and the gathering together of the mind happened more often. My mindfulness improved. And I found that I experienced the lightness of mind and body that comes with samadhi more often. 
the mind was free from hindrances more often and in different postures and activities, not just when sitting. When you get to this level, when you can keep this lightness of body and mind in all postures, then the mind is suitable for contemplating and investigating the truth at all times. It's not bored with the practice, it has energy, because it's able to see the results clearly for itself. There's no doubt, you know, oh, this is making me peaceful, it's bringing me happiness. But in the beginning you have to depend on some patience, some endurance, and putting forth effort until that sense of peace and the insight starts to arise. You have to keep reminding yourself of the dangers of worldly attachment and the harm of samsara, being born and dying in the world. You have to keep establishing your firmness in the five precepts if you're a lay person or the 227 precepts of a bhikkhu keep making that foundation very strong and out of that you develop your meditation by using the a meditation object which you find suitable putting effort into that using the breath contemplating the body another method we can use with the breath is learning how to count with the in and out breath as a way to focus mindfulness in the present moment. You count in pairs, so the first in breath you count one, and then the out breath you count one, one pair. Second in breath you count two, second out breath count two, third in breath you count three, third in breath out breath you count three, fourth in breath you count four, fourth out breath you count four, fifth in breath, fifth out breath as a pair. After that you go back to one. You keep doing this, extending the number so it's five in and out breath, six in and out breath, seven in and out breath until you reach ten. The aim is to do this without losing awareness of a single breath, being able to count each breath, in breath and out breath as a pair. Whichever method you find works for you to make your mind peaceful and settle down, then stick with that, try that. But go judge it by the results that arise, how much peace you get from that practice. So today I've been giving you a brief explanation of how to practice meditation. We can practice sitting meditation together for a bit longer until we uh, reach the appointed time uh, and follow the instructions Tanajan has given us.